Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be walking through the Bedrock Item Database that I just released yesterday. So basically, I'm going to be walking through in this video what it is, how it works, and how you might be able to use it in your add-ons and servers like that. So basically, the Minecraft Bedrock Item Database is very important. For let's say you wanted to store items when a player leaves the server. Like let's say they leave and you want to be able to check their uh, items for some type of moderation issue. Or let's say you want to create like some type of backpack system. Or let's say you wanted to create an auction house. Or let's say you wanted to, you know, create some type of ch custom ender chest or something like that. The item database is super important for any of those issues. So currently in Pokey Bedrock, this is what we use. So I basically redid it and I remade the entire system from scratch. And this is what it looks like. So I'm going to be walking through in this video how it works, how you can use it, and some common issues or sorry, common use cases for the items. So I'm going to hop over into VS Code and we're going to check it out. Okay, so... Here's the project source, and you can view the exact same stuff on GitHub. I just like VS Code better. And basically, there's this readme that explains a lot of things I'm going to be walking through in this video. But I'm going to go over a lot of use cases that might be useful for you. So basically, first, let's walk through the source code that you might need to use. So the source config item database. So this is an important file for details about the item database. So how this item database works is basically you have a set location in your world. At that location, the item database is going to spawn entities with a set amount of items per entity, right? So if we go over to the entities and we go to database.json, we can see this identifier database.database. .database. And this is the entity the item database uses. So why are we using entities? Well, I, entities are able to store information great, greatly more than any other database system you have. Additionally, since we are using the container types of entities, we can actually store almost unlimited items. But I set the limit to 200. And basically why is because Minecraft kind of corrupts if you store a bit more than this. So I gave us a safe database limit and also it makes it so those entities don't just, you know, corrupt and disappear. So that's a big issue, which I had to work around and you guys now get to use that. So basically the database spawns in entities at a location defined here. So it spawns in this entity type at this location. And currently by default, it's at X zero, zero, zero. So I did that because, um, for, Flat worlds, you might want to do 000, but if you're using your own world, I would do negative 64. That's just to make sure that it spawns at the very depth. So it doesn't really matter where it spawns because one, these entities are invisible. They don't move. They can't be killed. They can't be interacted with. So you don't really have to worry, but just to keep them out of the way for sure, I would put them somewhere at the bottom of the world. Okay, next, the dimension they're going to spawn in. I recommend using overworld. I don't know why you'd use anything else. I mean, maybe end dimension might be a good idea. I don't know. Never thought about that. But in dimension, whatever whatever dimension you want, just grit the dimension and do overworld. Now, next is the item prefix. This is sort of important. It basically is what the item ID is wrapped in. So we'll go over that later. But it's basically what the ID is wrapped in so that the database can get the ID back from it when after it decodes it. So let's walk through. Now, this database, you might be thinking, why don't we just sterilize the item? Now that's problematic because let's say you wanted to store a shulker box or let's say you wanted to store something with custom identifier data or let's say you wanted to store like custom enchantments or something like that. B big issue, shulker boxes you can't store and a lot of other things which will lose uh, NBT after you put them back in there. So until we get like exact NBT data, there's, you shouldn't be sterilizing items. We have to store it into a storage container. So basically that's the config. And then we go into the modules. So right now commands is empty. I'm going to be adding some custom test commands for you all. Um, I'm actually going, I'm actually working on a GitHub for my command system, which will then integrate into here. So you can use that. Now the errors is a, just an error, two errors that will be able to 
uh, be used by the thing. And events is the entity load event, which this is basically, you don't really have to worry about this, but what happens is when the world initializes, it's going to check if it can test four entities. And if it can, it's going to set the entities as loaded. This is important for like slash reload, because if you did slash reload in an old system, this kind of just fixes that problem. It also creates an initializer if it could not test for and it waits for entities to load and then it sets into those. So it's basically just a wrapper for entity loading, which is important. Now, the main code, the item database model. So let's walk through this. First, we're going to export a class of the item database, right? It's going to pass an identifier data type. So this type is a, a system which allows you to be perfectly type safe with the database, which is super, super cool. So basically, the item database item stack data is just a type that allows you to pass in an ID for that item. It also allows you to pass in your own map. So you can map certain items to strings. So let's say, like I said in the README, let's say you won the crane auction house and you can actually set the auction price, the seller. Now, I wouldn't use this for let's say sensitive data like an auction price i wouldn't use it for that but let's say you want to do a seller you know that's a good use case um why i wouldn't use it for auction price is because you know it's not a hundred percent secure it's still secure but i wouldn't trust it a hundred percent so i would definitely store that in some type of external sterilizing database like some type of text database so that's why this item database is super useful to pair with a second database right because you have your item database for items and you have your second database for everything else. Eventually, we would like to just have one database, but the limitations of Minecraft Bedrock Scripting API, we have to have two databases if we want to store any surmountable amount of item data. Okay, so you basically just pass an item identifier. Now, this is just the database entities which are used by the item database. So basically what happens is you create a new item database model and it stores the entity types, it stores a list of entities inside the database, and basically on load of the server, we went to that entities load command, it's going to create a ticking area if it hasn't already done one, and basically what that allows us to do is to load in those entities faster every single time. Then it's going to fetch all the entities and fetch all the items into a cache on the database model. Now this might be problematic if you are storing a huge amount of items. Um, for me, I don't really have that problem. I might actually look into that to see if I want to remove the cache or want to limit the cache. Maybe, good idea to look through, maybe a new possibility to look through. But nevertheless, it stores all the entities, stores all the items so that it doesn't have to do this every time because these are like awaitable functions. So then if the entity ever gets removed, very important, because if the entity ever gets removed, you've lost a ton of data. Now, this could happen because of a lag clear or, you know, someone does slash kill IE, although we do have slash kill IE protection on this. Um, there is some issues where it could happen. So I, you want to have this test case and you want to have this error being able to keep track of this because if this error ever happens, you have just lost a lot of data. So that's not good. Okay. Now we fetch the entities, which basically just loads the entities at that point, which we already walked through. And then we fetch the items. So basically, it's just going to load up through all those entities. It's going to grab all the items in those containers. Very simple. Clear. It's just going to delete all the entities. Simple. Uh, get all the items. And then get all item IDs, which is going to go through the get item ID, which is the next important part we have to walk through. So basically, the set identifier data. This is important because what happens is you pass in an item stack and you pass in your identifier data. It is then going to keep track of the previous name tag. So let's say a player named the item something. You want to keep track of that, right? So the item name tag is going to be the item prefix with the data.id, item prefix again with the previous name tag. Now, there might be a future edition where I want to map out the typings of data. It could be useful. But for right now, we're not going to be worrying about that. Well, actually, you know, it could be useful. It could be useful to do. But right now, we're not worried about that because I wanted to get the initial release out for you all. Next, we have the get item data, which is just going to reparse this right below. So it's going to split it, and it's going to grab this 
variable right here. That's how it's going to work. Then, so basically how the system works, it's just, it's identifying each item by an identifier on the item's name tag. It's so super simple. So it works, but it just works. It just works really well. And now let's say you want to set an item. Very important function. Because what it's going to do is it's going to set the identifier data on that item stack. It's going to remake a new item stack. Then it's going to look through all the entities that we are currently using. It's going to check. Is there any open spots on these entities? If there's not, then we're going to have to create a new entity. And we're going to wait some ticks because we want to make sure that entity has spawned in and is able to be used. And then we're going to set a dynamic property on the entity to mark it as this uh, database is used for this, right? So set that on there. Then we're going to do some error checking, and then we're going to add, finally, that item to the entity. So that's just going to keep track of all the entities. Now, then we're going to push that item to the cache, and then we never have to grab that item again, hopefully till the next world load. Then for getting the item, super simple. We're just going to get all the items. You know, this this probably should be a bit better because it's not really doing the best checking, especially if you have a lot of items. So this is definitely O of N, so we don't want to be using this. So I would look into actually improving this. So let's look for something right now. But basically, we're looking through all the items. We're checking which item has the same ID, and then we're returning that new item. Now, get all items is looking through the cache, so it's not terrible. But I definitely want to increase this function and probably make this async, to be honest. So next, removing item, basically the same as setting item, but instead it's just going to remove the item from the item. Also, a feature we might want to add is removing entities. So let's say you've created a new entity, you filled it up completely. Now you've created the next entity and you've removed all the items in that entity. And now you want to remove the entity. Good idea to add something for the feature. But basically that's the it of the item database model for now. And now we're going to walk through how you can actually use this in your own system. So I'm going to create a new test command. We'll call it test.ts. And basically, I'm going to import world. I'm going to do, uh, sorry, world dot before events. Let's do subscribe. Let's do, let's do player leave. I'll walk through that one we did. Subscribe. And then the player who left. Let's see if that's right. Yep. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to create a system that when a player leaves, we're going to store all of its items inside of a database. And what's it going to allow us to do is for a moderation system use case, you can actually check a player's items, item inventory after they leave. Very important for stuff for moderation, you know, something to do. So we can basically do const uh, player uh, offline item database right and we're going to create a new item database oh we're going to create a new one okay then we're going to pass in player offline item database now this identifier is what's going to be used on the dynamic property of the entity database so you could technically um, merge this with other add-ons because it will just keep track of them on the database so it's super useful there so let's say you have an yeah let's say you have a database here and then your add-on can actually use that too very simply okay so let's say when a player leaves what we're gonna do is actually github already did a lot for me well, we're not gonna worry about that is we're gonna do the player inventory component now I don't have my beautiful typings on here, so we're gonna do player dot get component. Actually, I think I do have my beautiful typings. <laughs> if a uh, player inventory component is not valid, then we are going to return because we don't want to use that for component. It's not valid. Now this should not happen. You only have to really do this if you're waiting a next tick, but I would just always do it just to be safe. Then we're going to grab the container inventory container is equal to player inventory container. We're also going to check if that's not valid. Return. Now, we have the player inventory container. Now we're going to do a for i loop to check each slot inside the container. So the inventory container dot size. And then we're going to get the 
item from that array equals intercomponent decay item. And if the item does not exist, then we're going to continue. Now, so for each item in this array, what we're just going to do is we're going to do player offline item database. We're just going to add, we're going to set the item, for example, this item, and we're going to set it to some data. And we're going to have to store an ID here. So basically now we just want to create some type of ID scheme. We can do whatever we want. It's But make sure it's super unique because if you don't, then you could mess up your database really bad because if you do an ID that's duplicatable, it's not going to look good. So, you know, something a good idea would be player name tag comma slot. Now, for example, if we do not clear this item database in the future, this would just clear it for us. So it's a super good idea. But I'm going to be a little bit more safe. I'm going to do data date dot now. This is going to give us a little bit more you know, security on that because let's say two players have the same name tag. Unlikely. Unlikely. We'll actually go name. Uh, it's two players with the same name. Unlikely. But we still want to make, we still want to be for sure. We always want to be for sure when coding this kind of stuff just to be safe. And we're also going to do const ID is equal to here. And we're just going to parse that ID right into there. Okay. All right. So there's that. And we're also going to need a list for item IDs, which would be just a string array, which is equal to this. And we're going to push that item ID. There we go. So now what we have done is when the player leaves the game, we have now stored all of their items into the item database right before they leave. What that means is that let's say in the future, we're going to basically after this, you're going to store these item IDs inside your own database, right? You're going to store that in some, some database you're using, right? Then in a future, let's say a moderation commands, you have a new command here. And what you're going to do is you're going to be able to get that player's items, get them straight from the database by doing players offline item database dot. You might want to do get all items and then parse them yourself. That'd be a bit more useful. So let's say we do the get all items and then we're going to filter each item where the item dot. Ooh, actually we're going to want to parse these because Okay, okay, never mind. We're going to do get all item IDs. And then we're going to filter each item ID to check if item that starts with oh, I dot starts with the player's name we're looking for. So say Snow of Kurt. So what this is going to do is it's going to give us all the item IDs. So it's going to return all of these IDs we generated with the starting name player that name so it's going to return it's going to return this entire id just because we started with this right what that means is now with this we can actually loop over all those items and display it in some type of box now the reason why we're doing item ids and then grabbing later is because item ids is actually stored very securely it's actually stored just in a string so it's a lot simpler to parse that than parse all the items at once. So then we could literally just loop over this and display the items back to the moderation player. Right? So there's a simple test case for this item database. Now there's a lot more stuff that can be used. So hopefully if you like this video and you want to use this item database, I recommend checking out on GitHub, start on GitHub, and I have a lot of changes coming soon for it because, like I said in this video, it's a lot of things we could improve on. So I want your all's help on working on this item database, and hopefully we can get it to be super uh, bug-free. So if you do like these videos, if you do like these projects I'm currently just releasing and working on, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and comment for what uh, kind of command tutorials you want to see next. So I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.